Good morning, guys, and welcome to episode one of Get It Painted. It is a new uh, Troll Trader TT Combat series where we are going to show you how to paint uh, various different miniatures. We're going to go through a lot of different ranges, um, and we're going to try and show you how to paint those miniatures using our up and coming TT Combat paints. It's pretty exciting stuff. I'm really excited. We've got um, three artists that are assigned to it, which is myself, Dave, and Mark. Uh, we have each picked a faction to start with, or I don't, I don't know what you would call it, uh, a group from the, the 40k universe um, to start with. Uh, I have taken Xenos, Dave has taken, uh, uh, what's it called? Im Imperium. So the Imperium of Man. I knew that. I don't know why. <laughs> I need to look it up. Um, and Mark is going to go for Chaos, going to go for all the traitors. Um, and yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna teach you guys how to paint it with our up and coming paint range, uh, so that when it's out, you can pick up the paints and you can achieve the same kind of look that we're getting here. We will start by painting all of these kind of tentacly bits that hang out off the bottom with uh, gun metal. It's a darker silver. Uh, the coverage on these metallics is nothing short of amazing, and I am very, very, very happy with them. Um, they go on in one coat mostly, and that's what I want. I want that. I have primed this model, prepped it ahead of time using TT Combat's Templar Armor. Um, that is a metallic spray. Uh, I kind of, I just covered the whole thing, just to kind of give it. It's a, it's a head start on net bronze. It makes sense. Um, you kind of, you want to get yourself a, a metal start. You absolutely could use a black primer. Um, you know, this this paint goes on really, really nicely. It's not like it needs to be on a silver base or anything but it, it's just a quick cheeky little head start um and and makes absolute sense this gun metal is a a nice dark dark steel um it's gonna give it a really oily kind of grimy look so i'm gonna give these tentacles a good good coat of that um and then we're going to wash it using a black wash. Plan for all of these videos is to upload uh, all of the videos onto YouTube, so you will be able to watch these at a later date and watch them back. Um, that's the plan. We want to create a library of how to paint miniatures. Get it painted is a concept that we've had here at TT for a long time. Because we've primed it using the TT Combat Templar Armor, um, it's super, super forgiving. Uh, if I've missed anything with the gun metal, you are not going to see it. You are just not. Um, well, that doesn't make this step pointless. Um, it definitely, definitely helps. For a split second there, I looked up and I thought that my mic was muted and that I've been waffling on this whole time and none of it was recorded, but that's not the case. Okay, so now we want to get a thicker brush. Sorry, we probably should explain that before we were using a TT Combat Showcase Layer Brush. I'm now going to move up to the Showcase Base Coat Brush and now we're going to apply this dark wash over the tentacles that we've just done.
So we've got one here that's called Tin Gubbins. We're going to apply that to all of the trim, all the areas that are meant to be kind of like a golden color. And I've used this before and I'm really excited to see how it goes on. So we're going to refer back to our sh uh, showcase layer brush um, and we're going to apply that to all of the areas that we want to have this kind of alternate me metallic color. So much like uh, we did with the gunmetal, uh, we're just applying this uh, with one really nice coat. This hasn't been watered down, thinned down in any way, shape or form, it's straight up bottle. Um, and it's going on so nicely. Okay, I think that's as much for the tin gubbins as I need. I am going to go back to my original color of gun metal. Um, and I, I have I've decided that I kind of want to paint this rib cage and the spinal cord using that same paint. Um, right, so back to gun metal. Let's tackle this rib cage. What we're going to do now is we're going to go with Ducat Gold. I think that's the, the dollar one. No, it's not. It's Counterfeit Gold. Counterfeit Gold, sorry. We're going to apply that to these kind of dangly bits. Now this is going to this is going to look really bright to start with, right? Um, but that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna give it a wash later. Going to swap over to my showcase base coat brush uh, from TT Combat, and we're going to do the, the same wash that we did at the beginning of the video. Um, but now we're going to apply it to all of the other areas that I've just kind of just painted the gun metal. That will help add some definition to. So, for example, uh, washing it over the top of these fingers means that the fingers no longer look like a blob of metal the the wash is wanting to go in between the fingers which then outlines the fingers which gives you that detail that you're looking for um you know it's been sculpted in there but if you don't help your eyes by adding some shadows and some highlights your eyes aren't going to see it as well and the model won't look as nice and won't look as detailed um so you kind of just need to help it help the model on its merry way and that's the whole point of things like washes and highlights Um, right, so this one we want our copper, which is heat sink bronze. Morning! Hi, Shmoo. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm now going to apply heat sink bronze, and I'm going to apply that as a highlight to all of these kind of bronze areas at the top. Uh, I'm going to swap back over to my TT Combat Showcase Layer Brush. Uh, it'll just give me slightly more control. Um, and I can apply in like finer details. So with this, I'm just going to go and hit these kind of raised areas to start with. Anywhere that would catch the light and 
to me now. Top of this collar is going to do exactly that. You'll notice that I'm doing kind of like lines. They're like little ticks I'm using for highlights. Rather than just edge highlighting, I'm going from the edge and I'm doing this motion here, kind of add uh, these kind of lined highlights. I'm super stoked um, that I'm getting to paint these cool um, Xenos models um, using these paints as well because they are a lot of fun to use, like genuinely, genuinely a lot of fun. I just like that they behave. The paints do what I want them to do and that makes me happy. Too often do we get misbehaving paints. This is a perfect spot for me to show you exactly what I'm doing here. So I've got this kind of big kind of domed area, which would be the Necron's hip or butt, big old booty. Um, so I'm loading up the paint, getting a really nice point to my brush, which I can do just by twisting um, off the palette. And then I'm just going to kind of pull it back over the top and get these kind of, I don't know, I don't know what to call it, hair lick highlights. I'm not sure I like that. Flicky highlights. Better, closer, warmer. Um, it should, they're just slightly more interesting and more appealing on the eye. Careful not to get up on that. Uh, more appealing on the eye than just a straight line that you can get. Edge highlights are great. They really are. That's not to say I wouldn't edge highlight this after the fact, in, in fact. Um, but applying these kind of licky, flicky highlights just helps kind of give a more blended feel. Uh, what paints am I using? New line or this is the, the up and coming TT combat paints that we were discussing last week on the TT combat channel. So these paints um, are our pre-production um, kind of concept paints. Um, they're 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 going to be coming to a Kickstarter real soon. Uh, a lot of these are done. They're ready to go in terms of uh, we've decided on the color, consistency, name, etc., etc., etc. We've just got to get the whole range sorted, or at least the first part of the range sorted, before we can go live on a Kickstarter. So I'm going to apply a flesh wash. I'm going to do that to both the gold areas, and I'm going to do that to the bronze areas. Okay. Mm -hmm starting to come together quite nicely this uh right we're now going to start applying the same flesh wash over the bronze areas and that's just going to kind of give some richness and some depth to these details i'm now going to take some black specter and i'm going to paint um the shaft of his staff and this is really going to help it kind of stand out at this point because Black is obviously very, very, I mean, it's as dark as it gets if you're going to go straight black. Um, and next to the rest of the model, that's going to make it stand out. At this point, I'm going to swap back to my showcase layer brush from TT Combat. I'm going to I'm going to go back to my gold real quick. Which is the counterfeit gold. And I'm just going to apply that to this little rune here, actually. Just kind of... Add slightly more interest to this stuff. So 
So what's happened where we've used the flesh wash is that you end up dulling down the metallic ever so slightly, uh, which is absolutely fine. It kind of gives it a really nice aged look. Uh, but what, what I want to do is kind of get those edges back. So I'm going to go back to my heat sink bronze, uh, which is what I'm currently using, and I'm going to reapply highlights um, around around the bronze areas. That's the heat sink bronze re-highlighted, kind of just giving it that, that shininess that we were looking for. Um, it still looks relatively dull, which is what we're wanting, um, but adding that extra extra highlight just kind of brings back those sharp edges because he's covered in, in what would be lots of sharp metal, right? So just going to apply a flesh wash to the gold that we did here. It's currently, it's very, very bright, more bright than I would like this particular part and I'm also going to apply the same flesh wash to the back of these tassels I don't know that I did it and if I did it's still not as dark as I'd like and now we're going to paint his face now his face is actually a very very bright kind of creamy color so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with PHR Bone. And that will give us a nice base um, to work with. Stick with the same brush. It's plenty, plenty point enough, pointy enough, sorry, and uh, old enough paint that it's going to do the job. Uh, we're going to apply that straight onto the face. This paint sells itself. Uh, this is PHR Bone, so this is an off-white, um, which would normally be a very difficult color to kind of get on with one coat. Um, and as you can see, it's going on like an absolute dream. I never thought I'd enjoy painting Necrons as much as I actually do. I do really love it. It's so much fun. paint the, the cubes or a char green to start with that will be the base coat for them and then we'll highlight using a uh, using trihorn turquoise this one's not even been opened yet Honestly, I'm so excited about this paint range. It's crazy. Never seen anything like it. Consistently pulling out paints that just go on in one coat. Vibrancy that that is um, that I'm getting, sorry, from this Rashad Green is crazy, crazy good. Very, very saturated. Great coverage. Um, popping. Just popping. Making sure I hit all of these little details because this is what will make the model stand out. It's absolutely within your prerogative to ignore all these details um, if you want to, you know, in favor of a quicker paint job. But they really don't take that much time to to tackle. They will make the difference at the end because. The reason these models are so cool 
is because of the detail that's gone into them and the love and attention that's got gone into the sculpt. Do your model justice by painting those details. Um, yeah, so we're going to apply this horrific pink. And we're going to apply that to the orb in the center of this tesseract here and the orb on top of the star. Stick those straight on. We are putting the, the this paint to the test at this point because pink is an incredibly transparent paint and we're doing it over something that's been primed metallic. So if we get a nice solid color on this, then the pinks are phenomenal. And I mean, I'm immediately impressed anyway. One of those squares. It probably, honestly, would have been smarter to have done the orb on the inside first. Right. I mean, that is popping. That. It's very, very bright. Very nice. What we're going to do now is take a break from those uh, cubes and the orbs, and we're going to go back to the face. Uh, so, as you will remember from earlier, we did PHR bone. Um, it's time to kind of highlight that. And what we're going to use now is crypt bone. I'm not too fussed about the kind of grubbiness around the mouth. I quite like that. It almost, it almost gives it a, like a nasty, dirty, general Grievous look. Where while General Grievous is kind of like a creamy off-white, he still kind of looks a bit grubby, right? Um, nice. Okay. That was that one. We're going to do a final highlight, which is Phantom Ivory now. And that's just going to finish off the face. Minus the eye, at least. We'll do the eye in a bit. Gotta give it that character characteristic kind of Necron bright green. Those colors together are amazing. So what was that? Crypt Bone, uh, PHR Bone, Crypt Bone, then Phantom, Phantom Ivory. Those colors together are phenomenal. Right, next up, the eye. And for that, we're going to be using um, a rather disgusting color called Ogre Bogey. So we're going to start off nice and bright. We're not going to go really dark with this one. We're going to apply it straight onto the eye, nice and carefully. We want to do a green wash at this point. Okay, yeah, green wash, and we're going to apply that to all of these cubes. Okay, and then we'll just capture capture the detail that's etched into them. I don't know if you can see that on camera just yet. You can just see the circle. I'm trying to make sure there's no glint there. You can just see that circle. Kind of, it was there obviously, but kind of hidden behind this flat color. Whereas applying this wash pushes it back out again. Okay, that's that one. We're now going to do a purple wash over the pink. For the same reason, so there's details on these pink areas. We wanna, we wanna draw those out. Right, so now we're just going to do some extreme highlights. And for that, we're going to use Supernova Chrome. And that's going to be used um, in multiple different parts of the model. It doesn't matter if it's gold, bronze, or uh, silver. Supernova Chrome will give us a really nice highlight in all of those different areas. Um, it just kind of give us a sharpness that we're looking for. Okay, I think that's enough for the highlights on that. 
Now we go back to the eye, which we're going to highlight using uh, another disgusting colour <laughs> known as Putrid Pus. I say disgusting colour, the actual colour is amazing. Um, but the name <laughs> gives me the heap jeebies. Okay, right. Time to highlight these boxes. So we've used Rashar Green. The next one is Trihorn Turquoise. Quick sharp strokes of the brush there. It uh, just gives you those really uh, kind of interesting straight line highlights that we're looking for. And the final step now is going to be the pink hole. And for that, we are going to use Rat Tail Pink to highlight it. Rat Tail Pink, let's get a nice point on the brush. I'm going to pick these details here, much like the cubes. We're going to pick it the direction and we're just going to follow it. For a paint job that's taken two and a half hours, I am somewhat happy with the results. Um, it's been it's been really fun, and it's always good to see this much progress in such little time. And dare I say it, it's done. Two and a half hours. And we've achieved something that I believe um, and would confidently say is tabletop standard. Um, I'm going to go away now. I'm going to base it. And this thing's going to be photographed. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Jota. I'm very, very happy with this. Um, wow. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm super, super happy with what we've achieved. Honestly, guys, uh, these paints made that possible. These TZ Pomac paints go on incredibly, incredibly nicely. They're just an absolute pleasure to use. Uh, when I apply my paint, I want it to stick. I want it to be in as few coats as possible. And with these paints, I'm able to do that. Um, yeah, honestly, I don't think I don't even know if there's much more to say other than that. Like, if you think that uh, you'd like to have an army that is painted up to this standard, then you can absolutely follow along with this tutorial. You could use these paints uh, and achieve exactly the same look. Um, and I know if I was going against someone that had an army painted to the standard, I'd be a very, very happy person.